So I just wanted to go over the JP banner of what was on Super 17 since Super 17 was announced on the official Facebook Dokkan Battle page. So overall, we uh, actually are getting some decent units. Um, I don't know if you guys are actually going to want to pull on him or not. So in terms of realistics, I'm going to go over everything with you. And I'm going to give you my opinion on the card. And if you're not a fan of Super 17, if you like Super 17, I'm going to say this before the video, go ahead and pull for him. He's not a bad unit. Just so I could say that um, he is not a bad unit. If you like the card, pull for him. But we're going to go over the card, the realistics, and the other cards that are on the banner and see if this banner is kind of worth it or not. Um, personally, I like everything on it, but, you know, it's not going to be for me. I'm, I'm honestly probably waiting for Super Gogeta. I might try my luck on Super Saiyan 3 Angel Goku. Anyway, so in JP, the average stats were 10% pull rate and SRs were about a 60% pull rate. Now, this one, I will say, if you don't have Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta, at least on the JP side, this is going to be one of the last times that you're going to be able to pull for Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta for a very long time. Unless they do something like they on Christmas, like they typically do. Christmas time, they usually have a special going on. Plus, in January, it's going to be the two and a half year celebration on the global side. So they will most likely have a lot of stuff going on for us, including having a lot of the 120 leads available. There's no guarantee, just my, that's probably what's going to happen, just what I think is going to happen, my speculation. Anyway, um, like they did with the core banner, I'm going to assume that, they do, that they're going to do the same thing on the global side with the Super 17 banner. Now you have uh, the agility Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta, all these are agility by the way, um, except for the two SRs. Super 17, or actually the other 17s aren't either, so I should really take that back. <laughs> so you have Super 17, you have a new SSR 17, Super Saiyan 3 Angel Goku, uh, Rose, Super Vegito, another Android 17, and two other SR variants. Now, one of these 17s is Android 17, one of them is Hellfire 17. Let's go ahead and take a look at the card. I'm not going to go all over their stats. I'm going to do that when the actual banner comes out, just in case they change anything. But anyway, this is the SR, the Technique Hellfighter Android 17. Decent passive skill. He's a key orb manipulator type to type, which isn't bad at all. I might pull just to get the SRs because, you know, it's always good to have orb manipulators on your team. Uh, he has some decent link skills, so he will be doing well on a villain's team with androids. So if you're looking to run like a mono villain's team with like a rosé lead, um, and then you have the androids on there, he's going to link really well. He Doken Awakens though. Now this is where these two SRs, because there's, you also have this SR regular Android 18, the, the physical type. Same thing as his other uh, counterpart, the SR technique counterpart. He is an orb changer, so it's really good type to type. Um, and they both Doken Awaken with medals from the event. They both Doken Awaken in the Super 17, so it's up to you. Now, my thing is, they, they both only do extreme damage, so they're not that great, in my opinion. They're good for links, you know what I'm saying? If you don't pull the original Super 17, or if you're running a mono villains team for that attribute type, they can come in handy. Um, someone like me, I'm probably I, I would probably wait till their Super Attack 10, then Doken them for a Super Attack 10 variant. But they Doken Awaken into Super 17s themselves, and when they Doken Awaken into Super 17s, they can be fed into the uh, the flagship banner card that you're going to want to grab. Both of them do that. And because they have a really high pull rate of, what was it, about 60% between the two of them, or 20% between the two of them, you're going to get a bunch of them if you're actually trying to go hard for it. You know what I'm saying? So you won't have to use Elder Kai, so you should have some Elder Kai stacked up if you've been playing since the two-year anniversary. Um, anyway, those two are not bad. Then we're going to go ahead and talk about the SSR variants. This is a regular Android 17. Um, he is another, well, he's not an orb manipulator. He's passive skill, signal, uh, fire of war, agility, intelligence, key plus one attack and defense plus 20%. So he's a little bit of a support unit. He has some decent link skills as well for an Android team. He Doken Awakens. He has a better passive skill, which is agility and intelligence, key plus two, attack and defense plus 25%. Overall, really good for support on an agil mono agility team. He's the one you're going to want to pull if you pull Super 17 for support. He's going to link well with him, and he's going to be support for the team. And then when Meta Rildo comes out, you could, you'll have both of them on rotation. Anyway, really decent card. Um, the Yeah, he actually has a lot of really good things. I think he's missing Shocking Speed, which is something you're going to want for that 7. Anyway, the other 17, the SSR variant, is the Hellfire 17. Now, both of these guys, they're, they're SR counterparts can be Z Awakened into SSRs for 50% chance of raising their attacks as well. So overall, these two SSR, the, I mean, sorry, these two SRs over here will feed in both to the Super 17 and the SSR Android 17 and Hellfire 17. So keep that in mind when you're, you know, grinding what you're going to want to do. Personally, if you pull all three of them, like the, the intelligence, 
the agility and the Super 17, I would probably, and you have like those SRs, and you don't want to use them like to Doken Wake and Super Tech 10 for whatever reason, you're not a, you're not a collector, you just use the main car priority cards. I would probably say use Elder Kai's on Super 17 and try your luck uh, without having to Doken Awaken those cards into these guys. So that way, you know, it just, you know, it, I, in my opinion, it'll be a lot quicker in terms of viability for speed in terms of, you know, you don't have to grind as much. Because then you're going to have to grind the event a certain amount of times in order to Doken Awaken them. But that's just my opinion on the matter. Do whatever you want. Um, the Intelligence one, it Doken Awakens Hellfire 17, key plus 2 and attack plus 90% when facing one enemy. So on a mono villain's intelligence team, he is very self-reliant, guys. Very, very self-reliant. It's probably because there's not a lot of Android intelligence, I believe. I think you have maybe one Android 18. Um, but outside of her, there's really not that much you could actually run. But anyway, regardless of that, supreme damage, rare chances on key plus two, attack plus 90%, and some decent link skills for androids. Um, some decent base stat. Really good unit overall. You know, he's not horrible. If you pull him, I mean, if I pulled him, I'd be happy. Don't get me wrong. He'd also probably be decent on a mono intelligence team in general. Uh, last but not least, we're just going to go ahead and talk about... We're not going to go over the Undoken form. I'm just going to show you the card art over here. Uh, the actual Android 17, Super 17. This is the one that everyone wants. G uh, extreme Agility Type E plus 3. HP Attack and Defense plus 120. Super Type uh, Agility E plus 1. HP Attack and Defense plus 50%. The heat does immense damage. Greatly lowers defense. His passive skill. Damage received minus 40%, which is really nice. Attack plus 30% with each attack received up to 120%. So after he gets attacked four times, he's doing 120% just like the full power Frieza all the time. And he reduces damage received. So right off the bat, it's not that great. He only has a defense of 5188. But with that defense of 5188, when you get that dupe system involved, like the Super Vegito and like other cards, like my Gotenks and my full power Frieza and my Gogeta, when you have full dupe system, assuming you get full dupe system, I know it's a far shot just because of the card and the type he is right now since he's like one of the meta leads. But when he is 100% he becomes very viable. Very, very viable. So, you know, he will, he'll be tanking everything. Uh, but overall, really good. And he has a 12 key multiplier of 150%. Not bad. And some decent link skills. I think the only one that... Every, oh no, he does have shockings. Um, if our big bad boss is the one that everyone can, uh, complains about for him not having. So, I mean... Whatever, I understand you would want that 25% attack boost, which would make him hit even harder. But what can you do? He doesn't have big bad bosses. Kind of sucks. He links very well with the LR androids, guys. I will be doing a team building um, of this card and other... Well, team building for him specifically on a villains team and a mono extreme agility team. So I'll be going over all that uh, in the future. Let's see. I'm recording this on Tuesday night. This video is going to be up Wednesday, so my team building is going to be up on Thursday. And I don't know what I have planned on Friday yet because I'll probably be coming back from Connecticut on that time. At that time, I'm back home for the night, by the way. Uh, anyway, so overall, not really that bad. Now let's talk about realistics here. Super 17 banner. Look at all the cards that we have here. Now a lot of these guys are new. 17, 17, 17, 17, and 17. The SRs are new, but if you don't like them, cross them out. You have three brand new SSRs here. You have 17, um, Hellfire 17, and Super 17. Three go three cards. All of them very good in their own right. One's a good support unit, one's a good self-reliant unit for a mono intelligence team or a mono extreme intelligence team if you go for that kid boob. And the other is the agility extreme type leader. So you can't go wrong if you do want to summon on this banner. There's some really solid units. On top of that, if you don't have Rosé yet or if you're looking for dupes, Rosé is on the banner. Super Vegito, same thing with him. Those are very two good solid units. And then you have the old school Super Saiyan 3 Angel Goku. I'm not saying that he is an amazing unit to go for, but if you're lacking good uh, agility, super agility characters, he's someone you would want to go for. And last but not least, that Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta. Like I said before, it's going to be a while before he comes back. So if you don't have, you might want to consider it. Now, like I said at the beginning of the video, if you're going to pull on him, this is not a bad banner to pull on just because of the amount of newer cards that are here. The problem with it is, Unless you're going to go out and actively search for Super 17 friends, he very, very rarely shows up on your friends list when you're looking for other leaders. Now, you might not care. You might say, whatever, that's fine. You might have a Majin Vegeta. You might throw him on a Majin Vegeta team just to link with the LR androids. I mean, it's not bad. And if you think about the team itself, Super 17 LR androids are technically free to obtain as long as you play enough and get those friend points. Um... So he has a really good free linking buddy that hits very hard once you get them set up properly. So overall, I'm going to say if you like Super 17, 
pull on the banner. There are a lot of really good units on this banner. It's not going to be a waste of money. I know I went hardcore on Korra just because I really wanted that Korra. Um, I got that Korra, but it just took me way too much. I won't be pulling for a while. Um, I like this banner, don't get me wrong. One other thing before we go, I did want to say that these SR-17s, not Super-17, but these SR or SSR-17s and the SR, they are not Doken exclusive, so they will be able to be pulled from any banner that they are feature not, not featured on. Not, I'm not saying that they're going to always be available, because there's some, because sometimes, you know, certain SSRs are not available on banners, but you can pull them on non-Doken exclusive banners, so keep that in mind. If you just want those two, it, this might not be the banner. Anyway, guys, um... Overall, I'm not pulling on the banner myself. I don't even, unless they do some like discount deal or something like that, I'm not going to pull on it. I don't find the worth of it. I would like another Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta, don't get me wrong. I only have one Dupath unlocked of him. But I, I have my Mono Agility team and I have the most optimal one at this point in the game. I have no real reason to pull for an Extreme Agility team. Um, that's why I'm probably not going to be pulling for the Janemba as much as I would like the Janemba. I'm probably not going to be pulling for the Strength Janemba. And I'm probably not going to be pulling for the Super Saiyan 3 Physical Gotenk. But anyway, guys, thanks for joining me here today. If you guys like the banner, go for it. Good luck. I hope you guys get one. Thank you for joining me. Make sure to subscribe if you're new, and I'll catch you all later.